My fellow St. Lucians, tonight we come to the end of an election campaign that has reminded us of the political choices that divide us and negatively impact our capacity for meaningful progress. On one hand, there are those who sincerely engage themselves in the development of our beloved country, while others are committed to tearing down St. Lucia with lies, trickery, and deception for the utterly selfish purpose of building a case for their party to gain political power. As we traveled across the whole of St. Lucia in the past few months, meeting with people from all walks of life, a very powerful truth became increasingly evident. It is clear that the reality of the lives of our people and the understanding of St. Lucia in the context of the world economic situation bear little, if any, similarity to the St. Lucia as defined by the critics of the United Workers' Party government. This election campaign highlighted the tale of two St. Lucians. In one St. Lucia, critics of the UWP entertain their media audience relentlessly day after day by indulging in anti-government propaganda. The objective is to fool the people into believing that things are so bad that it is time for a change. In the other St. Lucia, people accept and appreciate that their country is doing well compared to other countries in the Eastern Caribbean, and so they have turned off the frequent media noises which highlight selective concerns about governance and allegations of scandal. The scars left by these sharp divisions will need some time to heal in the aftermath of the election so that the nation can move on with the assurance that all hands are on deck in the public interest. In this regard, I am fully committed to leading an all-embracing initiative for national healing based on truth and reconciliation. Since the date for general elections was announced on November 6, 2011, we have seen an extraordinary intensification of negativity, all directed at the candidates of the United Workers' Party and the messages of truth. In the traditional media, radio, television, newspaper, as well as the relatively new internet-driven social media, the vilest and most slanderous language has been used to denigrate our candidates and distort our records of hundreds of achievements across the nation. The St. Lucia Labour Party ad campaign and PR assault have classified a number of our candidates as unfit to serve in the parliament. The media owners and managers have given uninterrupted coverage to every single story the SLP has concocted in its desperate bid for power at any cost. A few weeks ago, the election campaign agenda of the SLP was headlined by Dominican lawyer Anthony Astafan, brought in by the St. Lucia Labour Party to shift public attention away from the damaging image of Dr. Kenny Anthony. Asafan was assigned to contaminate the election campaign with blatant lies calculated to deceive, malign, denigrate, and insult the people of St. Lucia. In a disgraceful attempt to trivialize the findings of the Commission of Inquiry that cited Kenny Anthony and his government for maladministration in the Rochamel Frenwell corruption scandal, Asafan unleashed the totally unfounded allegation that the UWP government has lost 500 acres of land at Black Bay. The truth is, government has not lost one single acre of land at Black Bay. Indeed, while the government's interest in the Ritz-Carlton project involved 250 acres of state land, government has concluded negotiations with the receivers of the failed project to acquire all 500 acres. As has become typical of the strategy of the SLP, Kenny Anthony's chief legal advisor flatly refused to allow the truth and facts 
spoil his lies. His plan was to use deception and propaganda to get Kenny Anthony back in government so that he can personally benefit. The hypocrisy and double standards are mind-boggling. Yet, the SNP expects this questionable public office conduct to influence your vote in its favor on Monday, November 28, 2011. But while they try desperately to convince you otherwise, St. Lucia, during the reign of this administration, received one of the best rankings regionally and internationally by Transparency International in its Corruption Perception Index, which measures domestic public sector corruption. In their latest report, Transparency International ranked St. Lucia as the least corrupt Caribbean country after Barbados and 22nd out of 180 countries in the world, ahead of many advanced countries in the world. And so, we fully anticipated the recent emergence of a number of SLP agents who turned up to tell the nation all the reasons why questions about morality, corruption, and accountability in government should only be put to UWP. These agents include two most prominent administrators of the West Indies Cricket Board, President Julian Hunt, the SLP chairman, and Chief Executive Ernest Hille, an SLP strategist. According to an article by Tony Cozier in today's edition of the Trinidad Express, Hille has been predictably caustic in his criticism of the UWP and more especially Prime Minister Stevenson King at public meetings. King, he reportedly declared, was incapable of being Prime Minister. Even if Hunt, Hille, and the WICB choose to ignore the ICC directive on keeping politics out of the administration of cricket, the chief executive has compromised his employer's position with his scathing criticisms of the present government and personal attacks on King. So the world is watching. Spokespersons for the SLP have also emerged from the offices of OECS Public Service, from the back rooms of Rochamel, and from behind the closed doors of newspaper editorial influence to tell some truly amazing stories. For example, according to one of those stories, St. Lucia is now expected to believe that after a lifetime of demonizing and dehumanizing Sir John Compton, the St. Lucia Labour Party actually loves him and is prepared to honor his legacy. We are also expected to believe that St. Lucia is in an economic crisis all by itself. It is as though St. Lucia lives in its own world and suffers from a unique difficulty to be blamed wholly and solely on those who are currently responsible for governance in St. Lucia. Since the meltdown in global financial markets a few years ago, economies around the world have been in turmoil. But the records of the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank and the International Monetary Fund show quite conclusively that through the ravages of the global economic crisis, St. Lucia has achieved the best economic performance results in the member territories of the Eastern Caribbean Currency Union. Under my leadership, St. Lucia is now the largest economy in the OECS, a position that was lost under the SLP administration in 1998. St. Lucia is the best economic performer in the OECS. St. Lucia led economic growth performance in all CARICOM countries in 2010. St. Lucia is the largest exporter in the OECS. St. Lucia is the leading tourist destination in the OECS. And according to the World Bank, St. Lucia is the best place to do business in the entire Caribbean. Between 2006 and 2010, and according to the Economic Commission for Latin America and the Caribbean, ECLAC, foreign investment inflows to the OECS region declined by 42%. Yet, 
The UWP government is being blamed for a decline in foreign direct investment that the entire region is experiencing. Where is the economic crisis, as the SLP agents described it, that is unique to St. Lucia? When will this UWP administration get the credit it truly deserves for our performance results in the worst of times superior to that of the SLP in the best of times? There is an SLP ad that asks, what has the UWP done with the $1.5 billion it borrowed in the past five years. This is pure alarmist propaganda calculated to catch votes with deception. The UWP did not borrow $1.5 billion in the past five years. Despite the daunting challenges over which we had no control, the increase in official public debt in absolute terms projected to the end of 2011 is $634 million, while for the last five years of the SLP in office, the official debt increased by $677 million. In each of its two terms in office, between 1997 and 2006, widely considered to be the best of times in recent memory, the SLP grew the debt to GDP ratio by 12.1 percentage points. In this term, under the UWP, St. Lucia's debt to GDP ratio was only increased by 6.2 percentage points during the worst economic hardships the world has ever seen since we became an independent nation. The SLP spin doctors also say that the UWP reversed all the employment reduction gains made by the SLP between 1997 and 2006. But the facts don't lie. The facts tell us that under the SLP, the average unemployment rate per year was 19.2% compared to 17.1% under this administration. During the SLP era, 59,890 persons were employed on average every year. The UWP moved that average yearly employment figure from 59,890 up to 71,259, an increase of 19% or 11,369 more persons employed on average per year. The SLP criticizes our economic management performance. The reports of reputable, independent, regional, and international organizations clearly indicate that UWP management of the St. Lucia economy in the worst of times was superior to that of the SLP in the best of times. In other words, we did a better job with growing the economy. We did a better job in providing employment. And we did a better job in managing the public debt. At the same time, we increased the range and value of social services. We delivered the largest collection of people development projects in the OECS over the last five years. These projects brought greater safety, comfort, and convenience to communities all over St. Lucia. The SLP ridiculed them as T-Canal projects, not realizing that we were succeeding in our mission the guiding principle of Sir John Compton's political life to achieve the greatest good for the greatest number. You will recall that the SLP could not find money to pay reasonable wage increases to government employees during its two terms in office. With the responsibilities of managing St. Lucia through economic crises abroad and natural disasters at home, we were able to pay public officers an increase of 14.5%. The SLP specializes in criticism, division, and feeding the love of power. The UWP specializes in securing growth opportunities, delivering improvements in the quality of life, and leveraging the power of love, the power of we. We the people, 
working together to make things better for all of St. Lucia. That is why we are counting on your vote in record numbers tomorrow to be re-elected as the next government of St. Lucia. A pleasant good night to all of you. I thank you and may God continue to bless you, the people of St. Lucia.